This will be an unboxing of the Core i3 3220 LGA 1155 CPU. This is uh, essentially just a rehash of the uh, previous Sandy Bridge CPU, uh, the i3 2300. Uh, this is the average equivalent, so you do get all the benefits of uh, PCI Express 3 and uh, everything else that Iverbridge does tend to offer. But Iverbridge in itself, because uh, Intel uh, now pretty much has no competition from the uh, the red camp over at AMD, have decided in their infinite wisdom that underneath this heat spreader, from previous generations of uh, CPU, where they would put a, a solder, uh, flux solder based uh, interface between the die on the uh, the green bit of the PCB uh, in between the heat spreader, which it, the solder base provides significantly better thermal transfer. They've replaced it with uh, uh, regular thermal interface material, which has resulted in most Overbridge CPUs, particularly the high-end quad cores like the 3570K, being about 15 to 20 degrees hotter under load. So um, Intel have obviously done this because it's cheaper and they want to save money and because they're Intel and they can get away with it. Um, but let's do the unboxing. Let's just get some scissors. You can see it's uh, two cores, four-way hyper-threading, uh, Intel hyper-threading technology, smart cache technology, integrated memory controller, supports two DDR3 memory, three-year limited warranty, and Intel HD Graphics 2500. That's also an improvement from the previous Sandy Bridge generation. So we've got some information, it's 3.3 gigahertz, three megabytes of cache, 55 watt TDP. Let's get this open. So up we've got a manual with a Core i3 case badge. And then we have the stock Intel cooler, which essentially, design-wise, hasn't changed since Pentium 4, even probably before that. See, we've got pre-applied thermal compound, and is... Hmm, that's strange. On um, previous uh, coolers, I don't know whether this is uh, specifically for the Core i3 variant, but on the a Core i5 generation of CPUs from Sandy Bridge. I've noticed that the uh, the center of the stock cooler has uh, copper, uh, so this copper uh, chunk in the middle of the uh, uh, cooler, which is obviously is better for thermal conductivity. It seems just to be uh, steel or aluminium in the middle now, which potentially is there because you know this is a, a lower end uh, CPU and only so it's got a 55 watt TDP. Uh, or it could just be more cost savings by Intel. But quite honestly, you shouldn't be using this cooler in the first place. If you're using this cooler, there is something wrong with you, and you should see a neurologist. Even that you're even even though the fact that you're running a Core i3 3220, you can buy an aftermarket CPU cooler for like fifteen to twenty dollars. That would do a significantly better job at cooling your CPU. It will allow you to uh, you know it'll be it'll be quieter. It will probably last longer, and it's just it's just going to be a better experience than using what comes default with the CPU box. It's the reason why the box is the size it is. But in the rest of the packaging, at the top, we have the Core i3-3220 socket LGA-1155 Ivy Bridge, really hot CPU in comparison to 2300. See, see open up the top, it says uh, Core i3-3220, 3.3 GHz in Costa Rica. Thanks for watching the unboxing of the Core i3-3220, a dual-core CPU from Intel. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this.